morning, Pastor Roger here at the historic chapel of Templeton Presbyterian Church. On this Holy Wednesday, we're bringing a message of Jesus going through the Gospel of Mark. We've been going verse by verse over the last several weeks, months actually in our congregation. And now we're going verse by verse through the last week of Jesus' life. And the most important week in human history, as Jesus gets closer and closer to the cross, closer and closer to taking all of our sins upon His body on the cross and forgiving us of those sins through His death and ultimately His resurrection. And we know that the resurrection is the, the gift of God for us, but to get to that resurrection, we have to go through this time of difficulty. And on this Wednesday of Holy Week, we come to find that the, the put into motion the plan to betray and have Jesus killed is, is started. And so we're going to see that take place in just a few verses here today. And we will look at those verses together. So we're in chapter 14 and we're reading verses 1 through 11 on this day. I invite you to follow along with me of the Gospel of Mark. It was now two days before the Passover, so the Wednesday, and the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And the chief priests and the scribes were seeking how to arrest Him by stealth and kill him. They knew they couldn't trick him openly, so they're going to have to do something by stealth. For they said, not during the feast, lest there be an uproar from the people. We know that Jesus had gained such a, a strong audience. He had such an important crowd with him. And while he was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he was reclining at the table, a woman came with an alabaster flask of ointment of pure nard, very costly. And she broke the flask and poured it over his head. There were some who said to themselves indignantly, why was the ointment wasted like that? For this ointment could have been sold for more than 300 denarii and given to the poor. And they scolded her. But Jesus said, leave her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has done a beautiful thing to me. For you always have the poor with you, and whenever you want, you can do good for them. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for burial. And truly, I say to you, wherever the Gospel is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. What's so interesting about this is in the Gospel of John, we find that just a few days before this, almost the exact same thing happened. Jesus was in a different house, and a different person comes and anoints His feet this time with this oil, and that woman is scolded just as well. And so there's this common theme of people recognizing who Jesus is and wanting to give to Him in His final days. Maybe they had a deeper understanding of what Jesus was going to experience and many others around Him did not. And we have to understand that for ourselves. Do we have a, a true understanding of who Jesus is and, and what's happening? Let's conclude with verses 10 and 11. Then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went to the chief priest in order to betray Him to them. And when they heard it, they were glad and promised to give him money. And he sought an opportunity to betray him. So now the plan has been put into motion. One of the twelve, Judas, who was with Jesus, whom Jesus chose, handpicked, remember, has conspired with the scribes and the Pharisees and all those who wanted to get rid of Jesus to betray him his Lord, his Master. And how sad that is for the ministry of Jesus. How sad that is for those who would follow. We know what's going to happen to Judas. He's going to betray Jesus and he's going to be overcome by such grief and guilt that he will take his own life. But Jesus' ministry will be fulfilled even in betrayal. Even in betrayal. On this Holy Wednesday, I think we have to ask ourselves an important question. Do we recognize who Jesus really is? Do we see Him for who He really is in our lives? Do we see what He brings to us? Do we see what He gives to us? 
and we become distracted with all the many tasks that we have. Even noble tasks like helping the poor and doing good for those can take us away from who Jesus really is for us now and today. I hope that each of us can spend some time today in this Word and with Jesus thinking about what He's going to do for us. How He's going to give His life for us. And what that giving means. I'm Pastor Roger. I want to wish you a very happy, holy Wednesday. Very meaningful day. I want to say a prayer for us again today. And then I want to encourage each of us to remember that Sunday is coming. The resurrection is coming. And I encourage us to take part in these daily devotions and also to remember to gather together as the people of God on Easter Sunday. We're going to pray now for our community, for our world, that we would know Jesus. Father, help us to know who Jesus is. Heal our world. Heal our planet. Heal the nations. Bring them to You through Christ. We pray this on a Wednesday, looking to Sunday, the day of resurrection, the day of hope, the day of the future. Hear our prayer. Amen. God bless you. Amen. We'll see you next time.